Welcome back, everyone. In today's session, we're diving into an essential topic, web client pooling, connection timeout, and other configurations. These configurations are crucial for managing resources efficiently and ensuring that our API calls are fast and reliable, especially in high-load environments. In the last video, we successfully called a REST API using web client. However, we didn't discuss any configurations like connect timeout, read timeout, or connection pooling. These settings are critical when building robust and efficient applications, as they help handle delays and manage resources effectively. For web client connection pooling, we'll use Connection Provider, which is part of the Reactor Netty library. Connection pooling helps reuse existing connections instead of creating a new one for every request, improving performance and reducing overhead. Let's get started. First, we're going to create a Connection Provider bean. Think of it like setting up a swimming pool for connections deciding how many connections can dive in at once and how long they can hang out idle. To create a connection provider object, we'll use the magic of connection provider.builder. Now, here's a little trick. This builder asks for a name. It's like naming your connection pool. You can call it anything you like. It's just for easy identification. Now, Let's set the max connections. This is basically the maximum number of connections allowed at a given time. It's like setting a cap on how many people can enter a party. We don't want the place to get overcrowded, right? So, by setting max connections, we control the traffic and ensure our application performs optimally even under heavy load. Next up, let's set the max idle time. This is the maximum amount of time a connection can stay idle before it gets closed. Think of it like a person standing around at a party with no one to talk to, eventually they'll leave. Similarly, if a connection isn't being used for a while, it gets closed automatically to free up resources, keeping things efficient. Now, let's set max lifetime. This is the maximum time a connection can live, no matter if it's idle or in use. It's like the expiration date of a product. Once it's reached, it's time for the connection to retire. By setting this, we ensure that connections don't live forever which helps in avoiding stale or potentially problematic connections hanging around. Next, we set pending acquire timeout. This is the time that a request will wait for a connection from the pool before it gives up. Think of it like waiting in line at a coffee shop. If the line is too long and you've waited for too long, you might just leave. Similarly, if there's no available connection in the pool, this setting decides how long we wait before the request is cancelled. Now, let's talk about evict in background. This setting allows us to run the eviction process in the background, so our application can continue running smoothly without any interruptions. It works by periodically checking for idle connections and removing them, ensuring that the connection pool remains efficient without blocking any operations. You can also set different properties as per your specific requirements, such as connection timeouts, max idle time, max connections, and so on. Once you've set everything according to your needs, simply build the connection provider and return it. Now, let's move ahead and create the HTTP client bean that will use the connection provider we just configured. By doing this, we'll be able to efficiently manage our connections. Inject the connection provider bean into the HTTP client bean method. Now, using HTTP client.create, we can create the HTTP client object. And guess what? We'll pass the connection provider object directly in the create method. Next, let's set the connection timeout. To do this, we'll use the option method in the HTTP client configuration. Next, let's configure keep alive using the option method. Keep alive allows the connection to stay open for reuse, improving performance by avoiding the overhead of establishing new connections. Now, let's set the response timeout. 
This is the maximum amount of time the client will wait for a response from the server. You can configure more properties based on your specific requirements. For example, you might want to enable logging, handle retries, or configure SSL settings. There are plenty of options available to customize the client to suit your needs. Once you're done with your configuration, just return the HTTP client bean. Now, we need to inject this HTTP client bean into the web client bean method so that we can pass it and configure our web client to use the customized HTTP client. All right, now we're almost there. So, as you know, web client has this awesome feature called client connector. This is where we plug in our custom HTTP client. But here's the twist. Web client doesn't take the HTTP client directly. It actually expects an object of type client HTTP connector. But no worries. We've got this covered. To make it work, we need to create a new reactor client HTTP connector object and pass our HTTP client into it. Now, everything is set up and ready to go. First things first, let's start the employee service. The employee service is up and running. Now, let's move on and run our REST client service. Oops, we've encountered an error. As we can see in the logs, it's saying that the HTTP client bean is already defined in the REST template client config class. No worries. What we'll do is rename the HTTP client bean we created for web client. That way, there's no conflict with the one used in REST template client config. Let's rename the web client HTTP client bean and inject this new one into the web client configuration. Run the REST client service again. As you can see in the logs, the add employee API call was successful, and we received the proper response as expected. This confirms that our web client setup is working perfectly. Now we can confidently handle API requests with customized configurations, like connection pooling, timeouts, and much more. To summarize, today we learned how to configure web client for making API calls with connection pooling, timeouts, and other advanced settings. We also covered how to properly inject and use HTTP client for better control over the connections. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we'll dive into how to send images or documents to a REST API. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and enable notifications so you don't miss out on the next video. See you soon.